It's that time once again. You all know what I mean. It's time for another My Hero Academia Season 5 review. So to recap last week's episode, man, where do I even begin? I mean, it was probably one of the craziest things to happen in this series yet. In the middle of the final battle, while Deku was pursuing Monoma, something exploded from his right arm and went out of control. Turns out, this something was the quirk of one of One For All's previous holders. This quirk, named Black Whip, is particularly good for capturing, and manifested from Deku's desire to capture his opponent. Though the power was uncontrollable due to it being imbued with the stockpiled power of One For All, and Deku not having control on his emotions at the time of using it. Before Deku regained consciousness, the previous One For All holder told Deku to prepare himself, as he would be inheriting five more quirks, but to not worry as he wasn't alone. Just as Deku regains consciousness, a full-on brawl breaks out between the two classes as the episode ends. So now with all that recapped, let's move into this week's episode. The episode picks back up with the teachers approaching the battlefield and thinking about what to do. Aizawa assures them that if Midoriya freaks out again, that he'll immediately stop the match. But considering Shinzo's brainwashing was able to get Deku under control, as well as the fact that Eraser can, you know, erase his quirk, that shouldn't need to happen. When asked why, he simply responds that all the students are still determined to win, showing how nice of a guy he truly is. Back on the battlefield, Deku shows concern about using his quirk, but also realizes that they'll lose if they withdraw. Seemingly with a plan in mind, he asks Uraraka to do him a favor. What is this favor? Well, we're not going to find out just yet, as we've got to see what the rest of the students are up to. Here, we can see Ashido about to get walloped by Shota's twin impact, but it is fortunately saved by Mineta's great buckler. Or rather unfortunately, as Mineta can't not be a pervert for more than a second. So she yeets him into his own balls in order to create a high-speed assault on the Class B members. Back to Uraraka and Deku, Monoma shows up again for another attack. He gives an inner monologue about how with a quirk like this, that he's not meant to be a protagonist. However, this doesn't get him down, as he feels that every masterpiece has supporting characters that outshine the protagonist. As he draws near, he claims he has Deku's power, which naturally concerns Midoriya, as he remembers All Might's warning of limbs shooting off from unprepared vessels. Before he gets a chance to use it, Uraraka takes him down with her gunhead martial arts. Well, as it basically turns out, Monoma wasn't in any danger at all, as one for all was a blank for Monoma's copy. So, that's a relief. The guy is annoying, however, that doesn't mean I want to see him explode. Noticing his comrade is in trouble, Shinzo goes for the save with his binding cloth. But he's not able to follow through, as Deku launches up with the help of Uraraka's zero gravity, and catches the cloth in his hand. Now that Deku is on the offensive, Aizawa is watching him closely. We get a nice flashback to Aizawa training Shinzo. Shinzo isn't confident in his abilities to master the binding cloth, considering that it took Aizawa six years to do so. Aizawa mentions that he didn't have anyone to help him, so it'll be a lot different for him. He encourages him to keep at it. As for people like them, they need to be able to do stuff on their own. Then, in a less loving way, he lets him know that he wouldn't waste his time on something pointless. I mean, I guess it's nice to hear that you have potential, but also it's just so cruel and blunt. But, that's Aizawa for you. With his back against the wall, Shinzo strives to show Deku that he's not the same person he fought at the sports festival, or even from the first fight early in the day. He wraps the binding cloth around a bunch of pipes in an attempt to knock Deku out. As the pipes come crashing down, Deku mentions that all of his worries and doubts had disappeared after listening to one of the previous holders speak to him, drawing comparisons to All Might, and with that, he was able to control Black Whip and stop the pipes from falling on him. His memories of training with All Might and telling him that he could become a hero made him no longer fear the power that he was given. Stuff like this really gets me. God, I love Deku and All Might. Speaking of All Might, he stopped the other two teachers from stopping the match upon seeing Black Whip, as he noticed that Deku was much more composed and was in control. Deku's immediate improvement pisses Shinzo off a bit, and tells Deku to stop messing with his emotions, believing that he may have been bluffing before. This tears at Deku's emotions a bit and makes him lose the control he had on Black Whip, causing it to disappear. Well, that, and the fact that One For All has made it too powerful to control. In fact, Deku can tell right away that it might not be something that he can use for quite a while. So, that's a little disappointing to hear, but it's understandable. As Shinzo makes a run for it, Deku decides that the safest route to take in pursuing him would be just to use One For All at the 8% he can use for the time being. 
We see Orokoshi's love for Spider-Man in action, as Shinzo uses the binding cloth to swing around the battlefield. He expresses how he feels bad for letting the opening his teammates created for him get messed up, but refuses to let it end there. Now taking a look at Uraraka, she successfully restrains Monoma and begins to float him back to the holding cell. He tries to get her goat by antagonizing her, but naturally, she's taken precautions with the assumption that he still copied Shinzo's quirk. As she locks him away, he mentions how the effects of quirks he's copied still linger even after his time limit is up, and suggests that he's done something to Deku. She quickly heads out to help her friend, and remembers Deku telling her not to worry about him and to focus on helping the others. Trusting him, she heads for the rest of the team. Shinzo continues his escape, and we see a beautiful sequence of him swinging around. Honestly, for a student that has only had a small amount of training for a handful of months, he's doing wonderful. But Deku does have a job to do as the main character, and catches up to him fairly quickly. However, Monoma wasn't bluffing about doing something to Deku, as he hits him with the twin impact, knocking him off course, showing great proficiency in using his, or I should say, other people's quirks. As Ashido and Mineta begin to be overwhelmed, Uraraka comes in with a swift karate chop and a nice push of Kodai into one of Mineta's traps. The fact that she noticed that immediately in such a tense situation was pretty impressive to say the least. This surprise assault also gave the opportunity for Ashido to get a knockout of her own. And during all of this, Deku manages to bounce back from Onima's twin impact, wraps himself in Shinzo's binding cloth to get closer to him, successfully capturing him. Though Shinzo was very frustrated by not getting the show off more of how he's grown, he can also appreciate that these are students that are constantly moving forward too. And with that perfect 5-0 win, the winners of this training session are of course the Class A students. After the match, Shinzo approaches Aizawa and tells him that he's not strong enough to do anything on his own just yet. He was aware, based on the timing of everything, that this was his exam for possible entrance into the hero course, showing his frustration in not being able to do much. Aizawa has him go back to join the others for their critiques. Starting with Deku, no one had a clue what was going on with him, but naturally, he didn't know what was going on with him either. He definitely deflected a little bit, as Kirishima kind of picked up on the power being a bit different from your standard super strength. But fortunately, no one gave him any pushback. He gives his praises to both his teammates and enemy for helping him out during his time of need. Uraraka gets teased a bit by Ashido for her embracing of Deku, but she remains calm for the most part and focuses on what she needs to improve in the future. Reflecting back on their fight against Overhaul, Aizawa sees how much she's grown. As for Ashido, he kind of puts himself down a bit by saying all the things he was being praised for were just coincidence, and that he was really just focusing on himself. Aizawa stops him with a bit too much force in my opinion, to let him know that he's expecting too much from himself, noting that the only way one could achieve what he was expecting of himself would be by being as talented as All Might. In the end, no matter how he looks at it, everything Shinzo did was enough to earn him a passing grade. Though that's not enough for Shinzo, as he doesn't want to just pass. He wants to aim as high as he can, showing off that UA plus Ultra mentality. And with that, the episode is concluded. Overall, compared to last week's episode, it was understandably less exciting, but was still pretty solid overall. Nothing too crazy animation-wise, but the chase sequence with Shinzo and Deku near the end was pretty awesome. Also seeing Uraraka show great improvement in both her combat and rescuing capabilities was very nice to see. I would have liked to have seen more impressive stuff from Mineta and Ashido, but hey, I guess you can't get everything you want. As always, I'm looking forward to the next week's episode, but what did you all think of this week's? Definitely let me know in the comments below, as well as giving me a big juicy like if you enjoyed the video. With that said, I'm Mystic Sage, and I will see you all next time for some more amazing anime content.